to breed or not to breed? That is the question. It's one of the most consequential decisions of early adulthood. I'm at that age, early 30s, where the topic of whether or not to have children comes up all the time, online, offline. You're probably hearing people left, right, and center announcing their pregnancies. <laughs> okay. You can excitingly cry. They're having babies, <laughs> and more and more women are opening up about not wanting babies, or even just being a bit ambivalent, not sure. At this point in time, me and Alex are kind of unsure. We're not sure if we want kids, we're not sure if we don't want kids. This video is for you if you're a fence sitter, which I know a lot of you are. I get messages and comments all the time, ever since I had kids. And from reading your messages and from people who are near and dear to me, I know by now that the whole one day you'll just know thing is a total myth. There's just so many people in their 20s, 30s, even in their 40s who are still genuinely just not sure what they want. The narrator of Sheila Hetty's Motherhood Put it best. Whether I want kids is a secret I keep from myself. Of course, the only person who can know what's right for you is you. And if you know you don't want children, it's very unlikely you're gonna regret that decision because why would you regret not doing something you never wanted to do in the first place? But for those of you on the fence, your family and friends and society, YouTubers even like myself, are, it's all probably influencing your assumptions and even decisions about you know, parenting and I don't know, I just, I think that's something worth talking about. Loads of people end up stumbling into parenthood and end up loving the experience. And then there's people who reach old age who like always really wanted children, but they really enjoyed the experience of not having them as well. But I just, I don't think we should be aiming to live life by chance, you know, because there are people out there who really shouldn't be parents. I think we can all agree on that and there are people who would make incredible parents and maybe they're just absolutely terrified of the thought of it we should aim to be making conscious decisions about this in the knowledge that it's possible to be happy and fulfilled either way and whichever one you choose you are going to be miserable sometimes because experiencing misery and suffering is part of being alive I've being alive some meat to chew on. So, what are you doing here? You mean your pre-child self, just engaged, very well rested. Like I pretty much have time for this every day and my clothes don't stink. I made an effort today, but yeah, what, what do you want? I'm here to do the sponsored bit so you can have a bit of a nap. You have a couple minutes, right? <sighs> Come on. Amazing, brilliant. Okay. Hello, it me. I am gonna read some notes from that Melanie over there because you know she's talking about her future self and I'm her past self and I'm currently using natural cycles to prevent pregnancy, but I'm pretty sure, yeah, she noted down that she used it to confirm her fertile window two times and it helped her conceive both her babies quite fast. The one over there who's already asleep, um, she started using natural cycles seven years ago I've been using it for a few years already. I have many times documented my experience with natural cycles. It's the first FDA cleared birth control app developed by scientists. It is not a period tracking app. It has a certified regulated algorithm. It learns the pattern of your own unique cycle and will tell you your fertility status. It identifies the six day fertile window in each cycle that you have and that includes the day of ovulation and the rate of sperm survival because sperm live quite a while up in there. When you sign up, by the way, you can get 20% off of an annual membership and a free thermometer using my code, which is just my name. But yeah, so you have your app, your thermometer and every morning, before you even get out of bed, you just take your temperature and put it into the app and then it tells you if you're fertile or you're not fertile. Then you know yourself, do you need to use a condom as well? Do you need to abstain? Myself and Thomas relied completely on natural cycles as our contraception for a very long time. It's 98% effective with perfect use. Personally, absolutely adore this app. I think it's revolutionary. Long before I discovered it, I told you I wanted to go hormone free with my contraception and natural cycles has enabled millions of people to go hormone free. So yeah, code Melanie, 20% off. I need to wake her up now, don't I? I'm gonna throw something at her, an unopened bill. Mel, wake up babe. I know, I'm already awake. Sure, I sleep with one eye open and I will until I die because I am a parent now. Anyway, there's plenty of perfectly valid reasons why people either delay 
becoming a parent or just decide against it. There's money, especially now that we're in a cost of living crisis and childcare costs are insane. A lot of people are in a position where one person can't afford to cover like all the rent or mortgage bills, car, food. This modern world is not very child family friendly. Some people have huge concern regarding the environment and bringing more people into the world. A lot of people start to consider their family dynamics and realize they don't maybe have a village of supportive people. Maybe they have a village, but their job has taken them across the world from those people. And even things like the unfair division of domestic labor, like there's so, just so many things people are weighing up. Maybe you find yourself faced with one or all of these things, but you're still grappling with the biological drive to create a child. You're feeling broody, you know? Or maybe you don't want a child right now, but you don't know, is that just a temporary feeling based on how your life currently is? And you know, you find your thoughts wandering while you're lying in bed at night to 40 years down the line and trying to picture how your life is going to be. Every life choice has its positives, its negatives, its advantages, its disadvantages. So I'm going to go through a load of them. I love when videos like this start with like the disadvantages. So right. The mom guilt, disappointment with yourself as a parent. And uh, there's no such thing as a perfect parent. And you definitely realize that when you become one, but the constant feeling like you could be doing better or you could be doing more isn't easy to live with day to day. And while you love your children more than any words can ever explain, you'll also miss yourself, parts of yourself, because you have way less time and energy for your own pursuits and you'll be exhausted. Less time and energy for exercise, hobbies, travel. You know, for some reason you're watching this and you think you definitely do want kids, travel to as many places before you have kids as you can go everywhere because it's easier to do that without kids. There's less time for socializing, like unless you're hanging out with other parents and talking about your kids, you know, there's less time for chasing your dreams. I, you know, I published three books. I adore writing and I had to postpone re-signing with my publisher, Hachette Ireland, because I couldn't guarantee them that I would have another book written by this summer and uh, because I was pregnant and recently I had a baby like six weeks ago. So with that and a toddler and renovating a house and working, like my time is so split and I just really miss writing, man. And I haven't been to a gym in years. So there's that. Experts say that raising like a couple kids up until they're 18, it's like having a full-time job. Unpaid, obviously. Our society appreciates work that has a monetary value and parenthood is really overlooked, even though it does contribute greatly to our society. You are raising future workers, but you're expected to do that while also working another job, as if you're only actually working while you're working occupationally. Women, those of us with wombs, we are in such an awful awkward situation because when you juggle being a parent and working full-time or part-time you know you often do end up really exhausted and a lot of people end up very resentful usually of the work side of things uh, less so of the children but there are people who do end up resenting their children uh, just because they feel like as Bilbo Baggins put it but I scraped over too much bread I need a holiday. Having a dependent that you focus on more than you ever focus on yourself. Way less time for self-care. And then, you know, there's the worry. You have to worry about them all the time. A lot of people's kids these days will be living at home when they're, you know, still in their 30s. That's a lot of years to go through where the worry is like right here. I watched this documentary and it said that basically if you're a primary caregiver, um, doesn't matter if you're like the birth mother, even in same-sex couples who have children, the primary caregiver, like a part of their brain is activated and it never turns off ever. And it's to do with like basically worrying about your child. There's such a weight of responsibility to like, you know, you are essentially helping to shape a future hum human being, someone who's gonna be contributing to society. And within the first four years of a child's life, you are the primary agent of socialization, the parents. And um, before, you know, media and school and friendships and stuff, before all that, like 
comes in and kind of takes over and has more of an influence because like you know when kids get older they they're just like rolling their eyes at their parents or whatever but like when your kid is really small you've such a huge impact and that is such a huge responsibility like obviously if there's the day-to-day -day responsibilities involved in keeping them alive and clean and fed but the responsibility of creating a great person it's like it's like having an elephant on your face then there's just like loss of opportunity suddenly you have this little person and you have to make decisions based on what is best for this little person not what's best for me when you become a parent you should anyway put your child's needs before your own needs i remember my mom gave up a really great job opportunity when we were kids because you know my dad still lived in ireland and they were separated and we wanted to still be close to him and um you know it must have been really hard for her to not have been able to do that you're not just living your life for you anymore and um, then there is you know the chaotic house and everything being sticky all the time for sure like you don't have kids to have a clean house do you i know people who don't really like their children and i also know that you can grow up and not get on with one of your parents or not get on with your child's climate change so the sense of perpetuating human suffering very much a matter of your own perspective on this uh i like to see it as people are the solution not the problem like how about the possibility that our children that generation are the ones to help restore diminishing natural resources how about humans aren't a cancer on the earth i've heard friends talk about like how awful the world is and oh god i could never expose a child to this this world like these are you know middle class people living in a world with antibiotics and with relatively comfortable lives compared to the lives that people lived hundreds upon hundreds of years ago where obviously they didn't have a choice because there was no such thing as contraception but you know they were bringing children into a world where it was very likely that they'd have a high chance of dying within the first six months of their life or dying as a child i know that there was a time where people didn't even name their babies until they were like six months old or something in case they died you can go back a handful of generations it was so normal that people would have like multiple siblings die i'm pretty sure those children were really happy that they had the chance to live so yeah i don't know i know people some people will deny themselves like such a core human experience and then you know you know you're going to bed with that every night and that is just a huge subject to like kind of clarify your own place on if you would feel way too much guilt going to bed every night having brought a child into the world with how you feel about the direction that we're going in as a species it's worth thinking about that stuff before you do it so yeah there is lots of advantages of being child free you've lots of time for your friends for self-care for alone time with your partner and your pets and your existing family for studying for work for helping charities You've just got so much more time and time is just such a huge thing to think about the village which i referenced earlier like it takes village to raise a child thing that's never been more lacking and it's because basically all adults have to spend copious amounts of time working so there's just less adults free to kind of help each other out if unless it's for money because they need to use up their time their free time working so many situations will come up in parenthood that you can never like plan for you know you're sick and your child has an appointment and you don't have your full driving license yet and your partner is away on a work trip and there's no one around who can help out You've got another child who has their own things going on and they're just the, the the situations that can come up are endless and you need a group of adults in your child's life Children used to be brought up by a community of adults. That is just the way our species evolved. And if you're gonna go it alone and bring a child into a life where it might be just you, or it might be just you and your partner, it's gonna be really, really, really hard. I say that, let's talk about the advantages, the good side of being a parent. My kids are just my favorite. My favorite out of life, <laughs> like my son, he was a toddler, he's two, makes me laugh so much. He's so funny. The insatiable curiosity, the things he comes out with, he's more entertaining to me than any TV show I've ever watched. Um, I don't even know where to start on this list. Oh my God. A huge one is, um, now this was also a disadvantage, but like 
having someone to focus on other than yourself an advantage there really is something to having a little person in your life that like you you would go to the ends of the earth for this little person self-focus so like constantly thinking about how you feel and how this thing makes you feel and getting completely just trapped in that like self-analysis um it's just it's a really unnatural way for us to live our lives and it can be really uncomfortable for a lot of people it used to drive me mental i was in this just loop of anxiety because i had so much free time to overthink i used a lot of my free time to overthink when you have a child the emphasis is immediately put onto someone else. You'll be asking yourself day in, day out, am I meeting their needs? What can I do right now to fulfill one of my child's needs? And suddenly you care more about another person than you ever cared about yourself. And you're free from so much of the agonizing over thoughts of yourself. Not all of it, but most of it. And I don't know how to explain, but it's just such it's such a fulfilling thing to be living for someone else instead of just for yourself. Obviously you still live for yourself and you still have to like fill your own cup first and all that stuff, obviously, but someone else matters so much more. Yes, you can get this in, you know, a romantic relationship and stuff, but it is, it's a different level when it's a tiny little kid. Everyone, even people who don't ever want to be a parent, they have that like instinctual, you know, when you see a tiny little kitten or a tiny little puppy or a little baby, like everyone, it, you 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 become very protective. I've n I don't think I've ever met anybody who wouldn't like jump in front of a bus if it meant saving a little kid. And yeah, when you're like living with that day in day out and the child completely relies on you, it's just lovely. And uh, you, you're never bored anymore. <laughs> No time to be bored. I don't mean that, you know, you're gonna have all the intellectual stimulation you could ever get from your child, because that's definitely not the case. I often have to like listen to podcasts of just really intelligent people talking and having conversations while I'm, you know, playing dinosaurs on the carpet. Uh, what I mean is you're never gonna be sitting there thinking like, what would I like to do? You know, because you, when you do get an hour, you have a list as long as your arm of things you want to do, things you want to watch, books you want to read, places you want to go. Literally everything just suddenly seems amazing, like going to the cinema. Because you don't get to do it all the time anymore, it's like special. There's also just the kind of, you know, you're moving into a, a new stage of life alongside so many other people. It's all very new and exciting, like there's suddenly play dates and group chats where you, you talk to other parents about your kids and it's just, it's like being part of a new club, one that you just were not aware of before. And that takes me on to the disadvantages of being child free. Some people have talked to me about this, like feeling lonely or unseen in a crowded room full of other people who are talking about their families and their kids. And these days people live very long lives. I don't think enough of us think about ourselves across a full entire lifespan. A lot of people don't get to have this exciting dynamic career. A lot of people end up with a job. It pays the bills, it's temporary. You'd leave it tomorrow. And even people who end up with, you know, master's degrees, can end up with a job, you know? They're like, oh, this isn't like me doing what I really wanna be doing. And um, they decide I'm gonna focus on that and I'm not gonna focus on having kids. And then by the time they're like 50, 60, four out of five people will have had children. And these are people who've been in, you know, their life forever. And, you know, every time they meet up with them, these people are talking about their kids and their grandkids. And it's just kind of being aware that 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 is a possibility that you might not feel as close to that tribe of people that you were always super close to and of course you can always find a new tribe and you know we all get to have the chosen family of course people have told me that they'll often say you know when they when they do reach retirement that their time isn't in demand they don't have kids being like can you mind your grandkids they don't have people to go to for christmas you know they maybe don't have siblings or they maybe have one sibling and their sibling lives in Canada. All their friends are with their families and aren't jumping to invite them for Christmas. And then there's just society constantly giving them this message that you've missed out. Like parenthood is one of those things while, well, while you can't ever really make someone understand the amazing parts of it, like the level of the love, it's just, it's, 
just, you just can't, you have to go through it. In the same way, you can't make someone understand how fucking shit and hard it can be at times because you know people try they try and warn you like you'll never sleep again all that stuff like it, it doesn't really sink in and you go through it and then you're like oh oh anyway, the conversations around what you, what you may be missing out on or what you might not have experienced if you don't have a child those conversations will never go away in person in movies everywhere. Now I personally really 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 don't think that this should ever be a reason that someone does have kids um like to avoid this as in it should just never be the deciding factor but a lot of people don't think about it so that's why we're going to talk about I it. I mentioned it but like thinking about life in terms of the now being young and fit and able-bodied when you don't have kids there's no one around to look after you in your old age that could be a third of your life a long long time you've no idea what's going to happen what might be around the corner you know, i remember seeing this it was like a painting or something and it was a mother with her baby and then there was a picture beside that and it was that baby grown up as a woman <laughs> okay don't get all upset sorry just thinking about my nana that woman all grown up as as an adult cradling her her mother and her mother basically is like a baby because old, really old people are like babies. They need to be wiped, they need to be fed. <laughs> you often need to help them to walk. It's so sad, it's such a sad thing to even think about, but there are people in nursing homes who long for the comfort of children of their own, people to care about them, people to visit them, people to call them. To have people to love, it's just, it's just critical. If if And if you, do decide not to have children. You just start young, making plans for your future. And maybe for you, that means saving up a huge amount of money separate to like your basic retirement stuff, you know, to cover like, you know, maybe you have a pension that might cover food and a roof over your head and stuff. But think about like paying someone to care for you. And also think about your chosen family, as I mentioned, consistently nurture your friendships the people in your life, those relationships. Always be looking for and making new friends, especially other people who also don't plan on having children. Um, these people will be less likely to disappear off the face of the earth because, you know, I can say as someone with kids, it's not something you intentionally do, just like vanish into thin air on certain people. Um, you know, there's certain messages I've just like not opened in so long because I don't have the headspace for for it because you you really need to bring so much of yourself into a relationship kids will pull you from your friend groups in certain ways and it's yeah like you need to think about that again like a, a lot of people will have children so if you're not having children maybe do make an effort to gravitate towards people who also aren't on that path so we've gone through all that and now on to some good old-fashioned stream of consciousness writing prompts. Write this down in your notes app on your phone or just come back to this part of the video. But first I want you to write down things that like friends, family, teachers, even religion, like things people have said, messages you've received over your lifetime about what becoming a parent means. So just write those things down. Then here's, here's some prompts, okay? So I've always thought that by now, my life would look like, put yourself into your past self and think about, you know, the, the eight, where you're at right now, like go back to when you were 15, 10 even, and you say, say you're 35 watching this video, just write out a page. And on that page, it's like what you pictured life feeling like, looking like, smelling like, sounding like. Then at age 70, this is how I imagine my life will look. And another page on that. Write those pages, read them back and note down how you're feeling as you're reading them. If you've never before given too much thought to the whole kids thing, this will bring up a lot of feelings in you, I think. Another thing you could do is for like a week, really lean into, you know, just imagine that you've made the decision, like I'm gonna have a baby next year or like in five years like i that's definitely happening and just imagine that like you have 100 percent made that decision and note down how you feel and or likewise you can you could do this with the decision i'm definitely not doing it and 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 
live and move forward through life the next week as if that decision is made and just yeah see how you feel do you feel unburdened are you suddenly really devastated it is brilliant that as young people we have so much more choice around our futures that you can watch a video like this step back evaluate think what's best for me what do i actually want instead of just following you know this the path most commonly traveled you know you have the option not to you can paint your life the way you want it to look i have painted the life that I always wanted. From a very young age, I always, always imagined myself surrounded by a big family. Like, I think a huge part of that came from just like childhood, you know, that's what my parents had. They were one of eight siblings each side. My Nana, my Nana that I was really close to, she had eight children around her bed when she died. And being in her house was just always like, it was chaotic. It was just noise and mess and clashing personalities and like that's what's familiar that's what's always been familiar for me like just being so filled up with other people's voices and opinions and their needs their lives like it's just always what i wanted and i'm so happy that i just never gave up hoping that i would meet someone who i would be compatible with that i could build that kind of life with and yes sometimes i am filled to the brim with sentimental longing for the time when it was just me and, and my husband before we were married before our kids and we could just up and go wherever we wanted and everything was about each other and it was so beautiful i loved every second of that i just knew from myself that having an entire life of of just that it would not have been fulfilling thomas and i know that our bed won't always be full of limbs and our sheets won't always be covered in crumbs they won't always need us and we probably will really miss our toddler screaming no and standing on his toys and hurting our feet like at the end of the day when they're all grown up we're still going to have each other there will be time for friends and hobbies and we'll still be young enough to still be able to work i do think you can have it all just not all at the same time. If you've gotten to this point of the video and you're thinking having it all for me means not having children, know that you are not the only one making that choice and it is okay and everyone is different and what makes sense for one person doesn't have to make sense for the person beside them. My hope if you watch this whole video is that you move forward in this new year, giving your desires for your own life more thought and time and attention and that you go after a life that'll bring you a lot of joy and a healthy dose of challenge as well just to keep things interesting see you soon have i have a six week old baby i have to go breastfeed <laughs>